good evening all uh, i am parthavrutin das i am the founder of chanakka.com so what do we do we do actually the data mining analysis and we build products as well as the political consulting and political survey that is in political domain so politics is a field what i realize that there uh, the expenditure is very high so if someone like normal aam aadmi pe wants to join politics and you ask for a ticket from a major political party the first thing they will ask how much money do you have because in the political field the expenditure is if you need 1 rupees actually sometimes they tend to spend 100 rupees because the information asymmetry you don't have information it, it is very unorganized sector so you don't have so someone will come so generally political uh, uh, people earlier political people what's happening so they roamed the complete state understanding they have a great understanding of the situation now suppose next generation of politicians are coming they are educated they are directly jumping on the field of the politics so the ground situations will be different and you need lots of data facts information analysis to actually understand that situation so that's what we are trying that to make the field little bit organized make that it available more or less to all and analyze it in a much better way so that uh, this asymmetry will come down and everything happen so i am a bengali and uh, born in uh, west bengal eastern part of india and like every bengali they love politics and football so i am one of them nothing <laughs> and uh, i am just trying that what is my passion how to make it as a career so so that's the difference i can say and uh, so after uh, i did my engineering from nit uh, surat that is ocean part of india and after that i was working at tudi gori for stellite industries india limited so that is southern part of india if you don't know tudi gori it is around 120 kilometers north of kanyakumari ka so i have little bit experience uh, stayed in eastern part then the western part and the southern part okay and that makes me understand the diversity and uh, like what will work probably in east it will not work in the west and it will not work in the south so that makes the country so uh, interesting so so diverse i saw an opportunity in 2008 when evm machine that is electronic voting machine was introduced so earlier how voting used to happen and counting how used to happen uh, so like if you want to register your name in a voter list so suppose you are in bangalore you can't just like that you cannot go on the election day and vote in a general election in a bangalore so wherever your native is there your name has to be registered in that portal list and in that particular polling booth only you can vote you, can, you cannot go to go and vote anywhere so what happened previously people will go in their respective polling booths cast their vote in a ballot paper put that ballot in a ballot box and all this ballot box up in assembly 200 polling booths are there so the 200 ballot box will be shifted to the counting center they will mix all the ballots and they will start counting the election results and it will take 2 to 3 days now when evm machine came actually we get how every polling booth is voting and this data is available in public domain so what happened if you are able to gather this information you need to understand probably how election commission works how is the philosophy of the election commission everything so just for example in karnataka after 2008 when evm machine was introduced we have the data how every polling booth has voted in 2008 assembly 9 parliament 13 assembly 14 parliament 18 assembly 19 parliament in 2023 assembly so that is single polling booth how it is voting seven times we have the trend and at the same time this polling booth is the democratic data that is available as a voter list so you can analyze the voter list in terms of your religion in terms of your age profile male male female your caste analysis as well as like you can understand uh, probably whether it is upper uh, class area means whether the income level is good or it is middle class area or it is a little bit lower income group area so if you mix both this information like one side you have a voting pattern and one side you have a democracy you can build lots of analytical product you can understand like which booths they are always voting for a particular party or which booths there is a fluctuating and like 2024 parliament elections nearby so there is one term used in the political domain split voting that means a person is voting separately in assembly elections and separately in the parliament election so we can we can tell exactly is it all who are behaving some something like that behavior or is it some particular section of the people or how is it so we can identify those polling booths but the assembly voting pattern is different and the 
parliament voting pattern is different. We can understand it from the democracy, we can identify. So this sort of information is, uh, is I think, very important. And at the same time, what we do? We do political surveys also. And we build an infrastructure where we can do survey even in the booth level. Suppose I know the 10 polling booths in assembly constituencies which are strong for a particular political party. And that particular political party in last election pulled 60% vote from that area. And we did a survey. And there we got, suppose in the survey results, they are getting a 50% vote share. So still they are lead, okay. But if you put in our mathematical model, we can understand there is a 10% vote swing, negative swing is happening for the political party. And probably from that, we can get an understanding, the trend, how it is, it is going to impact. So, so far we have worked with 13 states at different levels, sometimes with the top leaderships, sometimes with some individual MLAs and MPs, it is there. So I have to share you two uh, stories, one, the Bihar 2020 assembly election and the recent 2026 Telangana election. So Bihar, if you see, it is a Hindi heartland area, Hindi spoken. And Telangana, if you think, it is a uh, Telugu speaking, it is a different state, number one. Number two, in uh, Bihar 2020 election, I worked with RJD, the regional party. So there the decision making process is completely different. And if you work with Indian National Congress in Telangana, so, so there you can find out that the national party, the decision making process is different. So we need to add up, when you are going for a consulting or something, you need to add up, you need to understand that ecosystem and you need to suggest accordingly. So in Bihar 2020, when uh, I reached uh, Bihar, so that moment the situation was there, if anyone is from Bihar, probably they can better understand that JDU and BJP was in a, in an alliance and this said RJD. And with the RJD, if you see, that time Lalu Yadav was not outside. He was in, in Jharkhand. He was in jail. So who was leading the campaign? The, Mr. Tejasi Yadav was leading the campaign, the age is 31 years. So what happened? The probable allies, Congress, they told, we have, don't have any chance. We don't, really don't have any chance. So better to fight separately because Lalu Yadav is not outside, so there is no chance actually. And, and I can still recall someone from the top Congress, one uh, lady leader called and told some absurd offer. Like, I want 76 out of 243 assembly constituents. They either give it, then we'll fight together, or we'll go separately. We'll not do alliance. So, Tesi Yadav came back and asked our opinion that this is the last final Congress of us. What should I do? So to be different, 10 people was there, 8 people told we break the alliance. And 2 people told that don't break the alliance. And I was one of them. And I explained that with some numbers, facts, and the chemistry wise, I told that, you see, if you go outside to your house, if you go out, people will ask one thing, sir, alliance is happening or not with Congress, first thing. So if it's your supporter want alliance to happen, so what will happen? Without alliance, definitely you will lose. With alliance, you may give a fight, and maybe 5% chance is there, you can convert into a win. So, so he decided that we we'll go for an alliance, and the alliance, alliance then they fought in the alliance. And if you see the, the handling, like someone is 31 years old and he is taking the sole decision, like if someone is coming, I need a ticket from that assembly constituency. You need to take the decision. So you will tell Patsa, I am denying this ticket. Now you sit and explain with the input data that why he is going to deny the ticket. Then we'll, in, we'll take out the caste equation, past voting pattern, how it has voted, and everything. And we'll try to convince that person that, you see, it has done by a proper analysis, not just some random thought. So then, and the election was targeted was the first time probably on the unemployment. Like, we collected the data every assembly constituency, how many people between 18 to 38 brackets. So if you see lots of data are being played now, in the election campaign and to make it the election campaign successful. So we collected that in 18 to 38 bracket, how many people are there? And the promise was the main promise was that that, that the government jobs, which is which is uh, uh, very well connected, the emotional connect is that with that population, that how do, how do can you create the uh, job for them, offer job for them, and that become the election campaign. And the election was very close, and finally, I think the final number of results was that that uh, uh, UPA. So RJD Alliance got 110 seats. Uh, they, they were lacking by 10, 12 seats. And the vote share difference only was 0.1%. But okay, that was the experience. You do your best when, when you have been assigned a job. And after that is the Telangana election, as you see. So Telangana was a very interesting part that uh, in Telangana, 
DRS was the main party and BJP took the main opposition party. But Karnataka elections when happened, when Congress was able to by a big margin, the political equation started changing. And the person uh, who was behind it, that was the, the present Singh, Dependent Devan Reddy. So what happened, uh, we started doing study of the uh, Telangana and we started posting in the Twitter that we did a survey in this assembly constituencies and this is what we are finding out. So then what happened, uh, suddenly the BRS and we got a trend that definitely Congress ahead in the Telangana, whatever we study and we are posting. So what happened, the BRS just started attacking us that okay this is fake survey and everything and whatever things happen. So what happened? But that survey picked up well by the local uh, media group in the in the Telangana and everything. And one of the in charge, uh, one of the leader, first initially approached us that I am in charge of 39 assembly constituencies. So can you help us? Who should be the candidate selection? What is the ground issues? And everything can help us. So we, so we made a report of 39 assembly constituencies and gave it to them. So what happened? The, uh, in the national party, the candidate selection was completely different. So uh, it means they have a national leaders will be sitting, your local leaders will be sitting, you have a screening committee, they will be sitting together and that report they will discuss and they will then they finalize their candidate selection. So our report was very appreciated in that meeting. That okay, this is much detailed and so we have a problem of more than 39, can another 40 seats, can you do it or not? So we said yes, we can do it. And that time we got a call from Mr. Revan Reddy that we want to meet that. You are getting so he came. Oh, just is a very informal meeting uh, in a lawn. He called. He sat in a lawn and he told. You see, I am talking to everyone. They are telling we are comfortably at, and you are the people who are telling that Congress is at. So how are it? How are it telling? What is the process? So explain that we taken sample. How much samples are taken? These are the numbers. It's there. So what do you think? I told him that uh, sir, yes, you are ahead. But at the election is happening today, you must form the government. So we told, okay, so what is happening on the ground? I think there is some reaction, there is some anti issue But unless you add some catalyst, make the reaction a little faster. So then it will not convert into the desired end product. That the, um, the what is the final meter numbers you want to get. So we told okay, what should I do? So we told very clearly that uh, sir, our uh, survey is very clearly telling that you need to bypass Hyderabad and you have to make this election. So bypass in Hyderabad, this is the main thing. Because you can't win Hyderabad, the gap is very high, you can't win. So what you need to do, this is the pay area of Hyderabad, you need to focus. And you have to win this election. You are not fighting 119 seats. There are total 119 seats which is there. You are, you are in fight only 90. <coughs> Can you consolidate, focus on this 90 and make it a magic number that is equal to 61. If you can do it, then only you form the Congress. He told, uh, okay, it's very interesting, so what should I do now? So what I told you, this is a, you need to take, make some strategic call, so that you can kill many things at the same time. He told, what, what is that, sir? I told, sir, outside Hyderabad also, there are two districts. Uh, I'm just taking the name, if someone from Telangana probably will much better understand. Adilabad and Islamabad, there are two districts, consist of undivided, if you take Adilabad and Islamabad. There are 19 seats and you are winning only two in those two districts. So Hyderabad is gone. If you also Nizam and Adilabad, you can't win. So that means you cannot, at any moment, the numbers doesn't suggest that you can form the government. So I'm telling you, sir, you go and contest one seat from Nizam. He said, it is not my district. <coughs> I don't know much. And see, you go. Because there is anti community. But unless until you go, you work as a catalyst. So you cannot. Uh, you cannot form the government, so you have to take the risk. When you are playing, play for the win. Don't play defensively, defensively. Okay. Otherwise, what will happen? You will get 50 seats, 50 more seats, and you will sit in the still you will sit in the opposition. That will be the case. So what I suggested that uh, Kamar Reddy that time already, that time sitting with the PM Mr. KCR was contesting from one more seat, uh, Kamar Reddy, and I told sir you are contest there. So he told what will happen if I contest? Then I told what will happen if you contest then. National party will not declare the PM candidate. But the moment you take on the sitting CM, so the indirect message will go that you are the PM candidate. And it will help a lot, especially in your community. That friendly community, it will give a clear message. Number one. Number two, what is happening? You may lose. 
no doubt. But these two weak this way, you can use around the code for HC and if you win, then the problem, that will be the permanent problem. So finally, uh, he decided and with a one hour interaction, I'm telling first time he's meeting, he loved the analysis and he decided that day that I will take, I will give the punches from an unknown six because the six will solve my overall problem that I can form the government. So he decided and he contested there, he lost, but from the two districts, exactly Congress was the between eight six and the, the finally the government was formed. And at the same time, uh, what is happening in a national party, you need to share information to many people. Okay, that's very difficult. Means the decision making body is not one. Like in a regional party, you share the information one person, two person, your job is done. So what is happening, you need to regularly study the, the whatever the movement is happening, you study you to, so and and it like uh, it is a real time analysis we can call it. If you love it, the people's the movement the behavior you will understand much better. You love it. So what happened? We studied that to provide the necessary information what is working, what is not working on the ground. And uh, the when the five state results came, the most difficult state for Congress was the Telangana rather than Chhattisgarh was comparatively easy or MP was comparatively easy. But Congress lost all. But Congress was able to win its Telangana. So now at present, uh, what next if you ask? So a parliament election is nearby. So there is a big thing, 2024 parliament election. Lots of national issues also come. It means, it means the thing very difficult to judge, very difficult to understand. So we are working at present in six states. Probably we'll work at nine states, that is one. And at the same time, what we understand that close to one lakh uh, now people are working in this state. This is growing very fast in the, as a political consultant. But the issue is there that we don't have any structure, like how to become a political consultant, what data are available, what should you study, what should not you study, okay. So, so that is uh, very difficult. So what I was also thinking that is very difficult with uh, some course sort of so that we can help these people and when you enter into the field, it should not be like that. I don't know, you are, you are learning like, like I enter, no one is there, you do mistake, you do correct thing. You learn from that and, and I think this field will grow because the new generation politician is coming. They don't have that experience of the state. So they need all sort of data analysis so that they can take a much more informed decision. Thank you all for the session. <laughs>